Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay. okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so good afternoon. So as mentioned earlier, so I am uh, architect Troy Elizaga, and I'm here to talk about the research requirement because um, this is your first um, requirement to, sub to be submitted um, in relation to your plate. Okay, so I will be talking about some background information and then about research and design and show you a basic format and then a more detailed uh, contents for chapters one and chapters two. Um, and then the format that we will follow in the research paper and then some other matters. Okay, so first about the background. Um, so there is actually no fixed format applicable to a situation when it comes to research. Okay, so that's one, one thing that you have to realize. Although um, each institution, like San Carlos, for example, may specify, specify a format to adapt. Okay, and then um, which it did, although it's also very flexible. And then for architecture department, we also adapted our own format, okay? So for the undergraduate program and also for the graduate thesis program. Now, despite the specified format, there have been many errors of the actual submissions. This is something that we noticed um, from way back. That's why it's not a good idea for you to, to refer to just any thesis book uh, and then copy how they do it, so especially copy the contents. No? Um, what you do is you have to ask, for example, a teacher to tell you whether this is good as a reference. Okay, uh, if you if you really want to look for a sample thesis book to, to serve as reference. So the research requirement in AR two twenty is meant to make the students familiar with the format in preparation for their thesis. Okay, so that is the direction that. Um, the architecture department is doing now. So you're supposed to prepare yourself in writing your thesis in fifth year. So that's why we're asking you to do it like piecemeal. For example, for, for this school year or for your, for your level in second year, um, we only stop at um, chapters three, or two, uh, chapters two, no? one and two. And I just saw the design six format for research, and then they included the methodology already. So, so it, it adds up. No? It's, it, everything else outside the, those chapters required from you will be given to you. Okay, so you don't need to, to research on them. Um, although you still need to do some background research if you have other questions. So only a portion of the first two chapters will also be required in AR 220 to 200, okay? Um, anyway, um, my point here is that actually some of you might be asking or wondering no, why you're required to do research when you think that uh, research is, I mean, design is only for, uh, is extinct, is, instinctive, no, it does not require research. So actually it does, especially in an academic institution, because we have to break down the process of our thought processes. That's how we are assessed. Uh, but after after you graduate, of course, everything else is comes in very, very fast, no? So anyway, so here, I'll show again the basic format. Um, there's nothing much this, discuss except that this is the one um, that USC, at least architecture department is following, okay? So the, for the contents of chapter one, when we say the problem and its setting, so it's uh, the introduction, which includes a background or the rationale or the raison d'etre, um, they're the same, no? And then the statement of the problem. Um, and then the scope and limitation and significance of the study, okay? Uh, and then also there's the definition of terms. 
So I think uh, here we will not go into the scope and limitation and significance of the study. So the introduction is basically the given problem. Now I'm supposed to write the problem here, except that, um, well, it's, it will be given to you separately. So I received it only this morning. Um, the statement of the problem, when you write it, so it has to follow this rule, no? um, because it has to be presented in a technical way. So um, some one university uh, calls it the ABC rule, no? where A and B are abstract concepts and C is the applied context. So there are five possible, um, possible arrangement of this uh, concepts and context when you write the problem. So it's either study of determinants of A in the context of C, study of the consequences of A in the context of C, study the relationship or link between, wala na po akong audio. Okay na sir. Sir. Okay. So na late, na late ko ko na ako yung dawat na message. And then the study, the relationship or link between A and B to the context of C, the study in the effect or impact of A and B in the context of C, and enhance the understanding of A in the context of C. But these are just background information for you, which you can probably use in your research later. But for this one, um, our problem is like a combination of two. No? The, um, our problem basically is the aim. The aim of this research is to study the design determinants of a walk-up apartment in the context of so whatever barangay it is in Cebu City and its effects on the architectural design. So this is basically what you're, you're going to, to do. Now, when to answer the research plot problem, it is necessary to break it down to manageable parts. Now, this determines the scope of the problem. And this is actually the meat of uh, what my presentation. So the sub-problems and objectives are sometimes combined no? They're inter or intertwined. They only differ in the format of writing because the sub-problems are written in the form of a question, but the objectives are written using the format of two verbs, no? um, to know, to study, or to, to determine. So to break down a research problem in architectural design, a useful tool is to determine the design issues that will be addressed in the research, okay? So each design problem actually has their own special feature, okay? Maybe it's the site, maybe it's the culture, etc. But to think of all the possible design, prop, design issues in a design, um, you tend to get lost. No? If you start writing them down, you might fill out uh, so many papers and you would not know uh, how, to, how to begin, okay? Because of the overload of information. That is why um, there, is, uh, there is one author of a book who wrote um, this book, no? Architectural Programming and Pre-Design Manager. His name is Robert Hirschberger. And he liked, Make, made a categor, uh, categories no, of design issues. So he had eight categories where all the possible issues you can think of can fit to any one of these categories. So therefore, it simplifies matters. No? So these are the eight categories. So you have here uh, cultural, human, environmental, aesthetic. You have uh, temporal, technical, economic, and safety. Okay. Um, we will go to them one by one. I will explain them one by one. Uh, when we talk about human uh, issues, we're talking about issues related to function, uh, social, psychological, physical, and physiological. Okay. Now, functional, for example, the Dulles International Airport by Eero Sarinen. Um, what makes this uh, a good example is that when it was planned, uh, the, the efficiency no, of the airport operation is actually uh, primary in the, in the programming. Uh, you can probably look up the, the plan on your own. And then 
the MIT Baker um, House designed by Alvar Alto uh, was actually designed to um, to to encourage no people to interact with each other. Okay, that's why it's designed like that. No? And then um, the Hills College uh, in house in the University of Pennsylvania um, actually had the double purpose of like putting up a, a very strong front, no, that's, but then when you enter, actually the, the interior of this is very much different from what they are trying to portray outside. So when, as long as you can enter this facility, so everything has becomes very friendly, but outside they try to make it look very foreboding. No? And, and uh, in terms of physical, we're talking about things like um, uh, people with disabilities, okay? So this, um, this work, Hazelwood School, was actually designed uh, to be like barrier free, okay? Then you can research it on your own. No? Um, and then physiological, uh, normally we talk, physiological is um, making the person as comfortable as possible. And normally this is applied to all the medical facilities. Okay, so those are um, issues related to the human comfort, your, your efficiency, human interaction. Another issue is environmental. Uh, one is about related to the site, for example, in the uh, anything about the site, you know, any future uh, when um, Nicole Boucher designed the Notre Dame de Hot. Uh, it's actually designed so that the approach, you, know, you can see the building uh, in not just in one, one, uh, in one view, but you'd like go around first until when you approach so that you can appreciate its cultural character. So here in climate, this is in uh, India, I think. Um, so this was designed to have uh, passive cooling that you can you can probably see the uh, wind towers there, no? Uh, so you design, especially in the Philippines, it's very uh, important, no? That we design according to our climate because we like modern buildings so much, and then we forget that we are visited by twenty or so typhoons every year, uh, and so we don't have overhangs, we don't have we have big windows. And context is another one. Um, in this example, uh, this is actually a big resort no? uh, in Arizona, and then it won an award for uh, um, for for meeting the the program no? of having a place for tourists in Arizona. And then resources, uh, the thermal bus of Peter Zumzor. It's an example of how he built over an existing uh, spring, uh, and then it became uh, uh, like an attract attraction for, for tourists. And then also in the site, in, in terms of environment, I mean, so there's also the issue of waste. Um, some of you might be familiar with the work of Gerti Ingels. Um, this is a power plant, so it's supposed to um, convert waste to energy, but then like all power plants, they look very big no, and monstrous. So he designed it so that it has a ski slope, okay? And then that smokestack there will actually uh, emit a ring of smoke, which is very, uh, also very amusing. So he made it more fun rather than make it look very ugly. No? So cultural consideration. So if history is something that has to be uh, applied in design or considered. So this is uh, a fine example, the Capitol, when the American um, Lathrop and also his companions designed it, uh, most of those that they colonized followed suit, no? That's why in Cebu, uh, the capital looks almost like this. It's, it's inspired by this. And some buildings are also dictated by the institution. Uh, how, for example, what 
what their vision is, their goals, um, and this is uh, very much um, apparent in uh, the work of Norman Foster for the Apple Park, no? the headquarters of Apple. And then here, political. No? Um, when this was designed by um, Paul Andrew, the National Center for the Performing Arts in China, uh, he had to meet all the requirements of, of the Chinese because the site is very much near a historical um, palace. No? Uh, it should not be more than it should not be more than the height of the palace. It should not overwhelm. Uh, and then there's so many things. So otherwise, uh, uh, the project will not push through. So the solution is to build going down. Okay. And so this has the a very very big basement uh, facility. So in fact, to go in, you have to go under the water to enter the facility. Now, legal has something to do with building codes. Okay. Um, for example, that's why I don't have really a, a good example. Um, so I showed here a housing that is defined by building codes. So these are legal requirements. So you might find yourself designing in an area where uh, the, the zoning and the building codes are really very uh, restrictive. So temporal issues, when the project calls for growth, no? so you're asked to, to make a project that you can add up, you can add later on, or you can expand later on. So like the Habitat 67 of Moshi uh, Safdi. No? Uh, so you can put up another stack of uh, living quarters on top of the other. Or you're asked to design a facility that should adapt to change. Um, for example, in a room, uh, you should be able to configure it any way you like, and which is pre precisely the program that Renzo Piano and Richard Rogers uh, followed when they built the Center George Pompidou. Okay, or uh, you're asked to design a facility that should remain permanent, you know, so that what they say, you no, know, anything, beauty uh, is something like you cannot take anything, you no. Know? Uh, from, from it, otherwise it does not become beautiful. So this usually applies to structures which have a monumental character. So this one, the Battle of the Nations Monument, uh, you can actually go inside, no? there's a, uh, and then go up there, and that's around, I think, uh, 15 stories high. So, um, and this is in Germany. or the issues that you will have to tackle might be related to technical issues. One is about materials. So you are asked to innovate maybe, or use some new materials. This is the Cardboard Cathedral by Shigeru Ban. Those uh, uh, roof frames there actually made of paper tubes. Or maybe a new system, either you invent it, or maybe a system that you want to, to adapt, no? like when Buckminster Fuller made the, the dome during the Biosphere uh, Expo in Montreal in the 1967. Or it might be the process of making the design, um, especially when it becomes a participatory process where the community also contributes Okay, so you're asked, so this is what happens in the projects of Alejandro Ravenna when he was designing for the disaster area um, in Chile. Uh, so they have tents which are separated from each other, but then uh, two tents always face each other, no? the entrance always face each other. So he said that why don't we the entrance face away from each other, not so only one direction, so that the space right in front of our tent can be theirs. And so this becomes the, and then the community started uh, giving inputs. They came up with this design so that they can build, they're given only half the house, the other half they, they can develop it 
any way they want as an open space or maybe an extension later on. So that becomes a, so at least the cost is also incremental. Um, economic uh, issues um, is also very real no? in the design. Um, if you are asked to develop, if you are asked as an architect to upgrade a community, an existing community, for example, in the favela in, in Brazil, uh, chances are you do not really bulldoze everything no? because um, you're supposed to just uh, um, like build from what is existing. So that's why in this study uh, involving Oma and Pulhas, so they opted to, to paint the houses in colors and then add, add more public facilities and then to create a more inviting atmosphere. So a method of construction, uh, which is more economical, okay? Uh, sometimes I see this as a plate for, for students, especially uh, container van designs. So anything that can, can be fabricated. And then, or uh, to be financially efficient, maybe the operation should also be efficient. So this is what's happening in the warehouses, for example. Um, they design it such that so you have all those cars going in and out, uh, and then it's easy um, to stack the, the materials. It's easy to look for something. And then houses should also be designed for easy maintenance. Um, this example, maintenance free house in Denmark, uh, uh, received a lot of awards. No? Uh, because of the materials that they use so it's not only not only because of the way it's configured so the glazing for example is something that you don't have to be cleaning often or, or the walls and energy so this um, is a work of ken yang in malaysia so most of his buildings actually have plants all over it you know, because he's making use of uh, passive cooling uh, aside from active cooling, but mostly passive. So he does that so that they, uh, to conserve on energy cost. Okay, so those are the possible issues related to economic. No? Now, the design problem may call for um, aesthetic uh, considerations. So in aesthetic, we have three you know, issues. Uh, issue can be form, and which is what uh, Frank Gehry uh, did when he was building the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. So because the site is very strategic, so it has to capture the attention immediately. And then how he, how he did the form is also very famous. No? Um, I don't know whether it's a joke, but I think he mentioned it himself, don't you? It's um, inspired from a crumpled paper. So, or maybe you're asked to um, define a space uh, into something, okay? Uh, maybe this is uh, designed so that the space is more spiritual, um, which is very, which is the forte of the Dao Ando. And he only makes use of light, no? Nature and light to create a spiritual place or anything uh, to, to manipulate space, to, have, to make it have, uh, have that character. Or maybe your, your design, in your design, you want it to have meaning, okay? Um, and the best example for this is the Vietnam War Memorial by uh, Maya Lin. Okay, so here, this is actually in the Washington DC, you know, near, near this is the, is the obelisk. Um, and this is just like a scar on the earth. You have a very well landscape earth and then you have a, a place there, which is a scar. No? Um, and then that scar, so you have, a wall which is made of granite, black granite, and then the, 
the names of those who who uh, who died were etched on the on that granite wall. Okay, so you go down to the middle and then you come up. But as you go down, there are more names and more names until you're overwhelmed by the names. No, and um, most of the people who come here actually um, are like um, affected. No. Uh, are overwhelmed by emotions, okay? Uh, so Maya Lin here actually was very successful in imparting meaning, okay? And giving significance to the, to the um, war done in Vietnam. Um, I think this is the last of the, the eight uh, Eight issues. No? So safety. So structural safety. For example, I well, I when I watch the documentary of how the Beijing National Stadium was made. So what um, what I can remember there is how they made sure that uh, everything is really safe structurally because of the way of the of the novelty you know, of what they're doing. Um, a big issue probably for you is about fire. No? So here, uh, the design of the office of Zaha Hadid made this building called Marcus in Macau, and it won an award for uh, being a um, how do you call that? Not really fireproof, no? uh, or maybe it's fireproof. I forgot the term that they use. So that uh, the way that they design it, for example, if there's a fire in the lobby, so it can the fire can only reach a certain height, but the lobby is actually greater or something like that. No? So it, it stops from spreading easily. So, the, but they have a lot of mechanical systems also to to suppress the fire. Another issue, palpable issue that you will confront with in your design uh, has to do with chemicals, no? safety from chemicals. And normally this is applied in laboratories and uh, say medical facilities. Uh, personal safety, a good example are the schools, especially in America where they have a lot of shooting at school. So there's a lot of um, uh, research being done on how to make school design safer. So there's a lot of uh, glass, for example, and positioning so that the administrators can see the entrance or some people and making the, uh, making the whole uh, ambience of the school not as restrictive or like prison-like no? so that the students would also uh, do not feel suppressed inside emotionally. And, um, and finally, uh, you might be asked to design uh, facility that is safe from criminals. And normally this is applied to an urban design context. So that, for example, in this here, uh, what happens under the flyovers? So how do you make it less, uh, uh, less conducive to criminal activities? Okay? So I think this is what they're doing also now in Cebu. No? Uh, and then there are artists who are uh, also have projects of making the underside of the flyovers, uh, putting artworks or making activities there, making a skating ring, etc. So those are the these are the possible topics or issues that you will encounter, um, and then you can easily uh, memorize this. By a mnemonic device, in which case the author said it could, you can memorize this by the first letter, no hectares, or is here like test each, no T E S T E A C H, and then you can uh, you can then uh, recite them all over. <laughs> now, the students are asked to the task to determine the issues which they think are crucial to the research problem. So you're given the site, the location, and then you're given the program. But uh, what do you think 
is the issue uh, that is more important here in this project. No? Um, and then it is up to them to determine how many issues to consider, but they have to support their choices. So. And there is no fixed number of cor correct issues, but the student should be able to identify at least two, okay? So don't choose one issue only because like that's like cheating already, or that's uh, making it easier for you. So you have two or three, and depending on how you defend it, because you will be asked by your teacher, so, okay, so you will be graded accordingly. Now, um, I talked to, uh, AR2200 is also coordinating with the, your planning subject and also your utility subject. So your uh, instructor in utilities uh, would like you to consider, uh, I think, um, what is that? What's uh, that? Acoustics, uh, sir. Acoustics and illumination. Yeah, I think acoustics. And then the second uh, illumination, second plate. So he wants acoustics become one of the design issues that all of you will consider because he will also grade you according to that. So you already have one. Acoustics would fall under what? Technical? Uh, technical issue. And then the task of the teachers are to validate or invalidate the chosen issues and to regulate the number of issues depending on the capacity of each student. Now you're so intelligent and then you just choose one or two so the teacher might challenge you with more or you're just a someone who's very, um, you're very active, very enthusiastic and you want to take all eight. Okay, so your teacher has to tell you be realistic. No? Um, choose only two or three. So that's, that's our role there. Now, the definition of terms, very important. All technical terms that you use should be defined. And this includes abbreviations, okay? So, and then abbreviations which are technical terms, not abbreviations which are the new words like HM for how much, no? so that doesn't count. So abbreviation should be included here, okay? So contents of chapter two is review of related literature and theoretical concept or conceptual framework, sorry. So look for similar studies, projects where the designer considered the issue you identified. So, um, you have the internet full of projects. No? Examine the challenges the designer encountered and the processes that led them to the solution. Okay, So don't just show a project and then show information about where it is built, when it was built, who built it, who designed it, and then that's it. No, So that's not how uh, related lit is done. So you have to look for the article that where the um, where the <laughs> where the architect talks about the project, how he made it, what problems he encountered, and how he uh, solved that problem, okay? And then it should be a project where the problem is similar to what you're facing. Okay, then look for three or more related literature, and then do not simply list similar projects without the information mentioned about, okay? Now, to form the theoretical framework, all you have to do is actually summarize what you learned from those um, projects. Uh, or it could be a study related to the project, not the architectural project itself. No? Um, for example, when there could be, a, uh, from my graduate class last sem, for example, they, they showed me a project of um, materials that uh, where the COVID virus does not uh, stay too long, okay? And then these are materials, construction materials that can be used for uh, the building uh, okay, to make it uh, more COVID-free, quote unquote. So what are the similarities with your project or with your problem and how are you not similar? What 
solutions were presented and what is applicable to your study. And more importantly, so what solution are you going to adapt, okay, based on what you have learned from all of this. So, and then that's now the direction of your research later on. So you want the solution to be uh, this way. So create your own strategy for solving the research problem based on what, what you learn from the related lit. Okay. The format for the research paper. So these are the contents. This will be shared with you. The slides, I will share it to your teachers and then they can share it with you. And then there's a cover page. By the way, reference, don't forget to, um, to include references, okay? Um, there should be a cover page which follows this format. So I write down here the text in case you cannot, you cannot read it. No? So the title, which is an upper case, double space and bold letters, 20 point font size. And then you have the text here that says research paper presented to the architecture department, School of Architecture, Fine Arts and Design, University of San Carlos, City City, in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the course, AR2200, Architectural Design 4, and then your name, academic year, and semester submitted. Okay, so we should have a uniform way of writing our reports. Uh, these are other things. We use a four size paper, um, 1.5 inch margin on the left, and one all over, one inch all over, and then Times New Roman font, 12 point size except for the title. 20 points size for the title, double spaced page numbers except for the cover, and then submit in one PDF file. Don't submit one page, one PDF file. No? So if you have 20 pages, 20 PDF files. So please learn how to combine PDF files. So I guess that's it. So if there are any questions, so please, I don't know how it's, it works here in Zoom. You can probably write them down in the chat. Okay. So I'm done. Ah, okay. Thank you, Sir Troy. Any, any questions, guys, from the body? I welcome Sir Carl Kabilao. Oh, welcome. Sorry, I'm late. Three o'clock, but I'm sassy. According to three o'clock, diba? Oh, but your yeah. students are here, sir. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sige. Uh, any questions, guys? If 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 you're too shy to talk to your to your mic, you can talk to the, uh, through the chat. You can pa? write them down the chat. Basic TMI ha, too much information ra about sa research. Oh, okay lang. <laughs> <laughs> TMI anyway, they can so... review it later. Yeah. So well discussed, sir. The slides. Uh, Thank you. So it's Joshua's turn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's welcome architect Joshua Tabaswares uh, for her, his koan uh, talk this afternoon. Also, good afternoon, Hi. sir. Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, wala nila sila pangutan na mabasi na tuog na nila sila ini ako nang may magkuan. Anyway. So, good afternoon, everyone. Pukawa, pukawa. Pukawa na to, sir. <laughs> uh, okay, for a while, ha? Can you see my screen already? Wala pa, no? Not yet. Not yet. There, screen. Uh, okay. Ha? Okay now. Okay. okay. Right, P. Okay, so I'm going to be discussing more of the details of, of the plate uh, as what was being presented by Architect Process earlier. I'm just going to be adding a bit, a bit to it. So as mentioned, your, your plate is uh, a four-story na uh, apartment building, but it's going to be an upscale na apartment building. It's located in General Maxlum Avenue, or it's commonly known as 
uh, the Mango Avenue. So, uh, para mas klaro, okay. so it's this area here. Okay, so that building there uh, is Iglesia Ni Cristo in Mango. So this is Horizons 101, this big building here. And your site is just across that building there. Okay, so this is that area. So you have a private road, a six meter na private road. It's a two way road, but it's uh, a private na, na road. We can use that as an access road, but your main entrance must be located on this area here. That uh, small opening, uh, I think it's around 15 meters, would be somewhere in this area here. So unfortunately, uh, there's this tree uh, uh, in the middle of it. And then you have this small establishment, not commercial, in this area here. Okay, so uh, this, this uh, road here uh, can actually connect to uh, the front of Redemptorist Church. But since this is a private road, no uh, access to, to uh, public na mga transport that's going to pass through this area here. Okay, napamagoy naka-block na sa ka-private na property going there. But uh, I'll just share some information na there may be a possibility that the, the development there, which is a condominium, there's a possibility that there could be an agreement between the property, uh, the, the owner of this property here, the road, and the development there at the back, to have that good access going towards the uh, Redemptorist Church. So I think it would also be good to consider that say, in Yuhang design. But this is your uh, the site. It's around 3,000 square meters. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. It's around 3,000 square meters. And you have a frontage of around 15 uh, meters. The road, the road right of way, the General Maximum Avenue has a road right of way of 20 meters. So, uh, since road right of way, Mansia, included there is already the, the sidewalks on both sides of the, uh, the road. So, from the 20 meters, let's allocate lang the uh, sidewalk. Okay, here's a closer view of the, the lot. So, we will be giving you the CAD file of this lot, and at the same time, I will be uh, uploading also the uh, the PowerPoint presentation so that you can have the technical description, which is this one here. So here are the uh, the pictures of how the site looks like again. Okay. And then this is from uh, the, the Pentis Menia Circle. So for your space requirements, you would be needing a reception area or concierge for uh, administration office commercial spaces, which is uh, you're going to be the ones who determine later on uh, what kind of commercial spaces that you're going to provide. But this needs to be as an essential commercial spaces that is going to be uh, in support of the apartment building. So you'll be dividing the, uh, the occupancy into three. You have studio apartment units of 24 to 28 square meters. You have one bedroom apartment units, 48 to 54 square. And you have the two bedroom apartment units, 55 to 65 square meters. You need to do a computation for uh, the number of, of units that you have so that you can determine the parking area, uh, a bit of the amenities for your parks and playground. You need to have a guardhouse, a security office, mechanical room, electrical room, garbage holding room, utility room, pipe chase for the plumbing, electrical, uh, fire, and the electronics entrance stairs and the appropriate ramps of computation of course and you need to have fire exit stairs because we would be dealing more of the safety also here and for your final uh, submission requirements you would be needing the design concept of course you have your conceptual diagram your site development plan all of your floor plans elevations sections reflected ceiling plans blow up for the room details of all three units and blow up of the entrance stairs, the ramps and the fire exits. You would be needing also perspectives uh, rendered with the uh, appropriate na mga entourage, exterior of at least two views, one side perspective and interior perspective of the three units, 
the lobby, the elevate, and the elevator lobby. The main lobby and the elevate, elevator lobby. And also, we would be requiring a an animation or a walkthrough. So for the deadline of your submissions, uh, we will be scheduling your first submission for the research on February 1. So that's a week from now. Less than a week from now. So you have, you have uh, less than a week to do your, your, your research. Uh, so it's going to be chapters 1 and 2 as per the discussion of architect Troy Elizaga. And your submission must be a uh, one PDF file in A4. Your next submission will be on the 8th of February. That's a Monday for uh, mostly your uh, conceptuals, your site analysis, conceptual diagram, bubble diagram, proximity matrix, the list of furniture per space, and uh, the mode of submission will be manual drawing and digitally laid out. It must be on one PDF also, A4 size. Next would be for your schematics. That is the design development plan. You have the schematic floor plans, uh, three schemes, schematic exterior perspective, three schemes still, and the mode of submission is the same as your site analysis and programming. And on the 1st of March, your preliminaries, design concept, site development plan, floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, uh, elevations, two views, front and side, exterior perspective, and same gap on your mode of uh, submission. For your final submission, it's going to be on the 15th of March. So uh, roughly two months from now. So uh, you have the final drawing requirements already, and your mode of submission would be digital drawings and digital layout. It must be in one PDF uh, all also, but this time it's going to be A3 and an MP4 file format for your walkthrough. Okay? Ayo, napay tao? Overwhelmed, sir. Oh. Okay? Overwhelmed na sila. Ah, sige, hindi na sila ganahan mamuta na, no? Okay, so... What I'm going to be talking about this time, which is correlated with our plate, is going to be an introduction to Rule 7 and Rule 8. So further details of the discussion is going to be done during your professional practice the class in your building laws. But since it's going to be used sa ato ang uh, classes or sa ato ang plate, I'm going to be discussing it in uh, more of the kind of introductory lang siguro na, na in a, in a way in terms of how to understand Rule 7 and Rule 8. I will also be uploading the copy or the, the electronic file in PDF format of Rule 7 and Rule 8. It's going to be uh, the, uh, in a, the official document that you're going to be using also in uh, your board exams, which is open book for at least and put karun. So, your board exam is going to be uh, using Rule 7 and Rule 8. So, this is the official copy that I'm going to be giving to your instructor and they will be sharing it to you also. Okay? So, uh, Rule 7 talks about mostly occupancy. So, every time I, I look at kaning uh, mga balaw, I think it's easier for me to understand if I'm going to look at the what's inside the tana, the code. So inside Rule 7, you have uh, the classification of occupancy, changes in use in terms of occupancy. You have mixed occupancy, uh, location on property, allowable floor areas, uh, maximum height of buildings, minimum requirement for uh, certain occupancies. And later on, we will be doing some a bit of computation so that we would be able to use them uh, more practically. But more importantly, we just need to understand that when we're dealing with uh, zoning and in classification of occupancy, we need to be able to understand or be able to, to use this map here. So the zoning map, for example, of, of Cebu City highlights or zones the, the areas of, of Cebu City where you can build certain uh, mga structures. So uh, let's say, for example, for this one here, the pink areas are commercial one. Uh, the red ones are commercial two, 
uh, the residentials are the one with yellow, light and dark yellows. So later on, I'll be explaining more what those zonings are. So all you need to do is just have access to the zoning map of a certain city that you have your project on. And you need to determine uh, according to the area of, of the site or the location of your project, what's the zoning classification of that area? Because that dictates the, someone, the, the codes that's going to be or the, the rules that are going to be applied to your site. Okay, so next is, this is how, uh, this is what the zoning classification uh, looks like. So you have there the uses. So they are classified into three. You have the principal, the accessory, and the conditional. Obviously, the principal use is what is the, the initial uh, uh, zoning, what you can build initially on that zoning. But the, the thing is, in order for that principal use to function, there are also certain accessory na mga structures. So that's why na tayo mga accessory na mga use for a certain zoning. Say, for example, if your area is zoned as uh, residential or more specifically residential one, then these are the principal use, indigenous family units or single detached units. And for accessory units, you may be allowed for a uh, uh, commercial garages, house for pets, which are certain among structures that are necessary for a development such as a subdivision, which is an R1, to function properly. Conditional, uh, conditional uses are those uses that uh, are allowed on a certain zoning provided a certain among conditions. Let's say, for example, for an R1 zoning, that's a single detached unit. Mostly high-end subdivisions are R1 among zoning where you can build your house. But at the same time, you can also build your office there, but there are limitations such as percentages of occupancy of a certain uh, space. Pwede ka mag office, but it can only be up to a certain percentage sa lot area. Those are conditional uses of a certain zoning classification. So inaniyo na to pagsabot ang ato ang uh, zoning na na unsa na na classification. Okay? So this is uh, how you understand. And this is what you can see at the very first na section ni uh, Rule 7. Under Section 701 of Rule 7, Occupancy Classified, all the, the, the buildings that you're going to be, uh, all the structures that you're going to be building are classified here according to groups and according to zoning classification. Okay? So for our use, okay, since na anamantay, Na anamante given na, na building type, which is an apartment building. So, ato na siyang mabutang na unsa siya nga zoning classification na lang derecho. But supposedly by practice, you need to look at the zoning map first. So, dili na to siya i confuse ha. We need to look at the zoning map first. Okay, let's see for example this. Ang ato ang location karun uh, could, could belong to, to uh, a certain zoning. And ug maghimo ka og different na na uh, structure there that's not allowed on a certain classification. Mo apply pa ka anog reclassification of zoning, which is a very tedious na na unsa na, na na process. So it's better na if you want to build a certain uh, uh, structure, make sure that it's allowed sa kana nga zoning sa inyong property. Fortunately for us, ang ato ang zoning, which is an R three na zoning, is already allowed where. Uh, we have our structure karun. Okay, so here are the groupings which you can you can look at uh, later sa uh, occupancy. But let's focus on group D. Okay, residentials, hotels, and apartments. There are three classifications on that uh, three zoning classifications there: R three, R four, R five. When you're talking about uh, zoning classifications of residentials, R one to R five. This is according to density. Okay, so if you try to look at also sa ato ang groupings, you have A and B there, and those are all residentials. So you might ask, sir, ngano lahi duhaman paman ka grouping si si residential? Ngano na may group A and group B? The only difference between group A and group B is ang commercial na na unsa na. Si group A is non-commercial, non-leasing, but when you go to group B already. These are already commercial in nature. So, mo ay niya. 
So R1 and R2, the difference for niya is R1 is purely single detached. We can see this in most na mga high-end na mga, mga residentials. So let's say, for example, when you're talking about Doña Rita, Santo Nino Village, uh, uh, sa paning mga Pristina North, those are classified as mga R1 na mga properties. Mostly, R1 na siya nga classification. R2, on the other hand, are duplexes. Multi-family dwelling na ni siya. R1 is single family dwelling. R2 is uh, multi-family uh, dwelling. So, ang pinaka-distinct niya nga, nga, nga characteristic is when you're talking about R1, they are single detached. R2 are duplexes. Okay? When you tra uh, transition to group B, which is R3, R4, and R5, mas dagha na siya, mas multi-family na siya. When we're talking about R3, these are row houses, boarding houses, and apartment buildings. When you're talking about R4, these are townhouses, and condomin uh, and R5 are high-rise na mga condominiums. Okay? So, kana lang sa siguro taka simple for now, para dili tama mo overwhelm. Okay, mo pa man atong coverage karun. Okay, so, sa inyong mga previous na mga plates, I think wala pa kay siya na ingon ani na na, na introduce because I, I, I think di pa sad siya siguro inana ka kanidad. But now, I think kanang murag mas kuana siya karun, mas critical na siya that you would be introduced to uh, developmental controls, which is uh, what we're talking about right now. Rule 7 and Rule 8. Okay? So, Rule 8, on the other hand, is uh, made up of uh, general requirements of light and ventilation. So, more siya ang Rule 8, light and ventilation ng iyahang, sort of ang iyahang title. So, it's going to be the measurement of site occupancy, uh, the sizes of courts, ceiling heights, so more of the comfort of the uh, the users. So, it establishes the, the height of the ceilings, the dimension of the room, the minimum dimensions of the rooms, air spaces required for each uh, occupancy, how much openings that you need, the vent shafts, uh, the skylights, and artificial ventilation needed for each of the classification. So, see, Rule 7 identifies where your structure belongs, and Rule 8 gives the, the, the requirements in terms of light and ventilation for the comfort of the users also. So, ingunana regadja ka simple. The reason why this is a bit murag kon kay nanamgo siya involvement of computation, which is later on I'm gonna show you the very basics of, of how to do it. Okay? So, next is uh, we're gonna be understanding what makes up the uh, unsena, uh, a, a lot. So, I'm gonna have to share a different screen. Okay. Okay. So let's break down Makita na ninyo akong screen. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's try to break down the the essentials when it comes to uh, developmental controls. Okay, so controls. Tinchay na niya kung agi ha. Upat tinchay niya if na ko yung spelling kay mga ay kung spelling. Anyway, magkuan tadaan disclaimer tadaan. So developmental controls. Okay, so unsa maning developmental controls? These are actually Redesign uh, on strategies that you can do sa inyo hang development or sa inyo hang project so that you would be able to determine uh, project cost without having to uh, design yet. So these are some computations that you can do so you can you can know how many stories do you need, how much money do you need for the development of the horizontal construction and the vertical construction. So let's dissect the lot first or the, the project first. So let's say, for example, we have a rectangular na in lot. Some abbreviations first. So let's start with ELA or the total lot area. Okay, so this is the whole thing. Okay, 
the boundary of the property. That's your total lot area. The first thing that you need to determine when it comes to developmental controls is the, the PSO, which is the percentage of site occupancy. So this is given, of course, in percentage basis, but also it would depend on if you're using firewall. So Monisha with firewall. Later on, when I show you the table, o gasa ni makuha ato mga PSO, you will know ngano na IE o na IF. Can you show without firewall? Okay. So in your TLA, ang components ng yung TLA is your PSO and your TOFL, or this is called the total open space. Within lot, okay. So, say for example, we have this lot here, okay. So obviously, we will start with your setback, right? So to determine that, naman tay mga data na, di ba? So let's start with the basics. Nasa later on, I'll show you some data. That will determine all of this. So the, re the rectangle in green is called your PSO. Okay. So this is your percentage of site occupancy. What's left is your TOSL or the total open space within your lot. So your TOSL is further divided into two components called the ESA or the impervious surface area and your USA or the unpaved surface area. So these are the very basic na uh, components sa inyuhang sa na, sa inyuhang developmental control. But we can further uh, look at this na mas uh, three-dimensional na siya. Because this time, this is still very two-dimensional. We're just talking about your lot. When we're talking about AMBB, this is called the allowable maximum volume of building. Or called as the building both. This now includes what is known as the DHL or the building height limit. And together with the FLAR or sometimes it's called the FAR or the floor to lot area ratio you can get what is known as your GFA or your gross floor area. Okay, so we start with a very two-dimensional na PSO and POSL. Okay, and then we added the sonata length width and to make it three-dimensional, we get the bulk of the building. Then we get the building height or the FLAR or the uh, FAR or floor area ratio. And uh, by multiplying that, we get the GFA or the gross floor area. Okay, so mangita takintahay ug sample. Okay, nimo tawag sample ha. Yeah, then I will shoot here. Okay, so I'll go to above. I'll make another. Mag-assume lang sa, ta, sa mga uh, data, pwede ko ganang maglabang-labang o ganang darn screen. We will just correlate it later kung kung saan mo ikaw niya. Let's say, for example, ang TLA na to for, for this. Okay. 
is at 1,000 square meters. Okay? Given that this is, let's say, for example, uh, butang lang na to, R1 siya na, uh, R3 na lang na development. Okay, let's say R3. Okay? So, ang ato ang PSO ni R3, let's say I won't use any uh, firewall, ang PSO ni siya at 70%. Okay? So, meaning, ang ako ang AMBF, or it's called the allowable maximum building footprint. Okay, you get that by multiplying your total lot area by your PSO. So you get 700 square meters. Now, unsa may gamit ni AMBF? This is what the code is telling us that you can only develop 70% or 700 square meters of your property. You can't go beyond that. So obviously, you can go as low as 500 or 300. But the, the, the thing about a lot of the developmental controls is you get to determine how much, what's the maximum that you can do. And if you a lot owner, especially for this kind of lot, if it's a very prime no property, you may want to maximize the use of your building or your property, but not going beyond in some way on sa balaod. Diba? So we need to look at that. But also, we need to identify the AMBF into two. Mayon tag AMBF na allowable. Okay? Okay? So, kung tanong ka, sir, nga nang napamay allowable because na may AMBF na AMBF actual. So, what's the difference? Okay? So, when you're computing for the allowable AMBF, this is according to what's given sa imuhang PSO. Given sa atong code na 70% ra. When you're talking about AMBF actual, we are now considering setback. Okay? So, when you consider setbacks and you place setback there already, okay? Di ba? Mauma na itong usually buhaton sa itong plate. We, we put in setbacks right away. And that's our only basis when it comes to the allowable na ato ang footprint na atong ibildan. But that's not all. Dapat ang imuhang total dire must not be greater than your AMBF na allowable. Okay? So when you compute for the AMBF allowable and the AMBF actual, the 700 square meters or the 70% of your PSO or the 70% of your TLA must always go burn. Okay? There are times when you put in your setbacks na mo abot pa niya o bigger than your allowable. Okay? So you need to check that also. Okay? So this is the, uh, the, the computation for your PSO. Now, let's talk about the HL. Okay? The building height limit of R3 is uh, 18. 18 story. Let's check that later when we will look at uh, the data. Okay? So you have a maximum of I think 18 or 12. Let's check that later na lang. And an FLAR of, let's, I will get one from there. An FLAR of 7.1 to 8.1. Okay? So, money atong mga data nga atong i-check later on if I'm correct. Okay? But we already put down ato ang, ato ang maximum to four story. Okay? So, if ang ato ang allowable kay 700 square meters times 4, so you have 2,800 square meters in total sa imuhang gross floor area. Okay? So, this is how simple ang imuhang makuha niya. But, this is the very basic lang sa computation when it comes to developmental controls. 
that way you would be able to know already nga, okay ngayon yung mong client na when you're talking about feasibility sa imong project if you're talking about 2800 per square meter and a going rate of 30000 per square na development then you would be able to get how much is the construction project of a uh, construction cost of a certain project because if you can remember according to ang ato ang professional fee sa pila moy construction cost so even before you started your design when uh, you do a project you already have an idea if pila ang construction cost sa imong project so that when your client would ask kung pila ang ang gasto and your professional fee you can already give them a ballpark figure of uh, the entire na project and that's very important because you would also be able to determine pila man mo ROI ni mo when it comes to developing the area already so let's say for example for 700 square meters on the second floor okay pila man atong masudi na because we've already given you what's the size of the uh, the studio the one bedroom and the two bedroom so pila may mga going rate karon sa market when it comes to rentals so pwede na niyo ma-compute na okay per month at a I think it's safe to go for 70% occupancy siguro but it's very uh, conservative o gato ka 70% occupancy but at 70% occupancy ang imuhang igon or you may want to target a 5 year na ROI so by having all of this data already you would be able to to forecast na makuha ba nimo ang target of 5 years na na return of investment because this is already commercial in nature when commercial in nature na tong project, we need to be very sensitive when it comes to how much a certain project costs and how much is the uh, construction cost. Diba? So I think it's it's also important na makahibalo tayo na na. And then dili na tayo maghuwat na, na we, can, we can start with a concept, we can start with a floor plan, even the schematics to determine all of this. By doing the... Uh, uh, developmental controls, you would have a very good picture of how the how much the project will cost and what are the other na mga, uh, development controls that could affect your project. Okay? Okay. So before ko mo shift o balik sa PowerPoint, may, may question. Mm -hmm. This is basic arithmetic, Roberto, di ba? And everything will be given to you later on. I'll, I'll have Uh, share screen to balik, There. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. You'll you'll have this later. Okay. So. This is now uh, what I talked about earlier when it comes to uh, PSO or the percentage of site occupancy. You will see on this table here, I also included the page number so that you would be able to determine right away when you want to open your own copy of uh, Rule 7 and Rule 8. So it's in page 131. So here you would be able to look at uh, maximum R3, wherein uh, you have... Here are 3, 70, 20, and you have 80, uh, 20. 70, 30, 80, 20. Uh, this one here. Kita mo ninyo akong mouse, no? Kane. Uh, okay. So you have R3 here. So we belong on uh, maximum R3. So mo na rin na, kanang na IE, ug na ang kanang na IF. So this is without firewall, and this is with firewall. So you have 70% minimum maximum allowable percentage of site occupancy, and you have 30% na uh, TOSL. Okay, and for firewall you have 80, 20. Okay, so this is for your uh, PSO, ISA, uh, USA, and your TOSL. Next is for your building height limit. Okay, so this is how you get the uh, the total gross floor area. And for an R3 maximum, we have here. So uh, 12, you guys see, 12 story ang yung maximum for the DHL. So we have here 12 times 80. So we only have four. So that's 80%. Atong gamit ganina is 
70% man to kay we use the without firewall. So all you need to do is divide the number of store uh, the floors times the PSO. Okay? So uh, we will make it more complicated later on. Okay? So this is the building height. Okay? So the maximum uh, R3 maximum is at 12. R3 basic is at 3 story, so 36 and 10. Okay, so that's the building height limit. Okay, now we have the uh, minimum setbacks for residential building structure. Okay, so how to use this properly? So for R3, we have basic and we have maximum. Okay, so for the front yard, we have two, uh, eight meters. And then for the side, we have two. And then for the rear, we have two. Ganong na may nakabutang din na optional. Okay? For the uh, residential structures, certain na mga uses have optional sa ilahang mga uh, setbacks on the uh, side and rear yards. The reason for this is it works together with uh, the codes regulating the firewall, which is after my opinion discussed. But let's look at the 8 meters here first. Okay? This works on frontages lang ha? Okay, so 8 meters. Naka-asterisk siya because when you're talking about uh, R3 maximum, that's why if you look at mga structures that belongs to R3, it's very typical na ang ilahang uh, ground floor has a setback of 8 meters. Okay? And then when it goes to the second floor or the the succeeding floors, it goes back to the three meters minimum na setback. So those are actually uh, given by our code so that you have a three meter setback and an allocation for the parking of five meters. But when you go up to the uh, upper floors, mobalik na siya sa three meter na setback. Okay? Unless provided under the code, which is this would not work, especially if you're. Uh, located on some national roads na naay mga certain na mga na, mga provisions sa, sa, sa mga roads nga dagpo nga dili pwede nga mag, uh, magbutang ka o napay mas more stringent na mga mga codes na mo-apply for that. But unfortunately, uh, fortunately for us, wala nang tayo mga na. Okay? And then, we have the floor area ratio. So, mga maximum lang ni Zia. So, R3, we have 7.1 to 8.1 at 8 log story na. And so, this, dili kayo siya mo-apply na to. Okay, maximum naman ni Zia at 12 meters, but we only have ours at 4 uh, meters. But it's good to note that for an R3 na, na, ano siya na, development, we can actually go sa atong side of up to 12 meters. That's the maximum that the law or the code allows. Okay? So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to firewall. Okay, so for example, if we're talking about R1, you're not allowed to do firewalls in R1 na mga uh, residential na mga uh, uh, occupancies. Na siya yung mga given lang na you can have uh, a firewall for the purpose of supporting a carport and so on. Okay, so you can read this later on. Na ani siya sa New Home Rule 7. Okay. So sa ato AS, that's why nakabutang dito sa iyang side yards na optional ang, ang 2 meters is because you have choices. Okay? You can choose any of this when applying for your uh, firewall. Okay? It can be erected on a maximum of 85% of the total length of each side property line, provided that all firewall construction shall not exceed 65% of the total perimeter of the R3 na property. But even though uh, kani atong i-consider ng front, you will you may want to consider also this one here as your frontage. These are aesthetic na nga call ninyo karun. Kung ganahan ka mag-firewall ka din na, okay, okay, it's already considered a side yard, then do so. Pwede rin kayo ng sanan, but do you think it will look good? So dapat na po tayo mga aesthetic na mga, mga decisions that we need to include when it comes to deciding where to put our firewalls, okay? It's only good that we know what the uh, the code is trying to say or unsa may ato ang limitation. As you may, as you all know, uh, most of our codes here are actually, some of them are really open for interpretation. But it's good to understand them fully 
so that you would be able to argue the limitations also. How would you argue the limitations if you don't know what the, the, the code is saying? Okay. And the best way for me is uh, when I try to understand certain provisions of the code, is I try to I try to sketch them. Okay. Say for example, for the provisions of the firewall, I try to sketch them and try to see if it makes sense in a visual na, na, na way na sakto siya to what is being provided by uh, code. So, kana imuhang pwede magamit so that you can gauge yourself if you really understood or if the, the, the code already makes sense. Okay? So, these are some of the other part code provisions already. These are, are this can be found in your uh, Rule 7 na, na, na document. So, that perhaps is uh, what comprises developmental controls uh, when it comes to dealing with uh, project na and project development. Any questions? Mamarsh? TMI. TMI sila, sir. Mamarsh, hindi pa mag-TMI o kadiyot. I know we still have 15 minutes. It's gonna be just five minutes. We can still continue beyond 4.30, sir. I, I was informed by okay. Giselle that we can still continue. I delete Ramam Kuanda siya. Remember katung from last sem, I presented something that's very quick about about presentation lang. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll 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 introduce something lang na para kuana lang para parihat at anan. So, uh, this is just a koan lang. Kanang, uh, I just wanted to share this to you out of uh, para lang na atay with all similarity when it comes to presentation. And we have the same understanding of what we're trying to, to present. Uh, I've been discussing this with my, my CAD na class. But unfortunately, even after they go to an uh, thesis, dili dihap po na to bitaw makita ang um, quality, you know, quality, but the importance of your drawing or what they really represent. Diba? And supposedly, these architectural plans that we are presenting are supposed to be communication tools. This was discussed to you during your graphics one. Diba? So make sure that you are communicating what you you intend to, diba? So, basi niya, ang unsay naa sa inyong concept or sa inyong inyong mind is one thing, but then you're presenting something else because it's not presented or conveyed properly by your drawings. And there are techniques, man, diba? And I know this has been taught to you by your graphics one, graphics two, and your viscom na mga mga classes. But I'm just gonna do a very quick na lang na na, 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 na discussion or presentation to it. Okay, so when it comes to sketches, it doesn't really have to be very beautiful. Okay, uh, the important thing about when you're doing sketches is the variation of certain na mga, mga lines. So, uh, kailangan lang siya masabta na to and your idea is there. Okay, so ang, ang question siguro here is if you're trying to do sketches without having to explain it, pwede ba siya masabtan sa tao na yung mga it would, have, it would be nice if you do text, you do arrows, you do certain variations of, of, of thickness of lines. So that would that would uh, interpret to unsama important. What are you trying to show us here? So there are ways of doing that. Diba? Let's try to remember all, our alphabet of lines. The visible lines, the phantom lines, ang katong mga section lines. These are certain ng mga lines that's communicating different ng mga ideas. So we need to use that in our sketches. We need to use that in our final presentations. So, okay, it would look man to sa ato ang graphics, pasin siguro importante na, no? So that's what we're trying to look at when it comes to the quality of the, the plate that you're presenting, that you are doing all of this. So to break it down into a very simple na fun, I will divide this into uh, manual sketching and the, the digital. So when it comes to uh, manual sketching, I would I would say that I'm not very good in, in sketching also. 
but these are the very uh, basic that I do when I do my sketching. Okay, so I use uh, line weights. Okay, it helps a lot. So when it comes to line weights, I think you only need three. You need to have your profile, your light, and your boucher. So when you're talking about profile ng mga lines, we're talking about the perimeters of the lines. If you look at the example at the, uh, at the side, you have there uh, the, on, the, the car, di ba? So these are the profile ng mga lines. These are the light lines indicating the detailing. And these are the crochet, kanang mga, sketch, mga hatching na to or mga shadings. So these are just the basic components when you do your sketching. So if nalakayin mo na ang mga variations, makita naman na ito, okay, mas emphasize na siya. Okay, same as when you're doing walls, di ba? If you have certain walls, let's say for example, kana, and then you have an opening. If you're just doing something like that, that's very, sana, murag, an interesting, wala depth ang ato ang, uh, ato ang drawing. But when you introduce, let's say for example, a profile na line, you introduce something like that, and then, butangan to give me more mga detailing for your light in mga lines. And then, lastly, your scratches. That would significantly improve your presentation. Diba? So, tulura jud na sa kabo. Okay, when it comes to sketching. And then, you you combine it with, uh, let's say, for example, okay, mga highlighter na mga pens. So the interpretation or the, the, the representation of what you're trying to, to convey as an idea could easily be understood by the person who's looking at your sketches also. Okay? And when it comes to digital also, okay, it's very important that we have some certain more about etiquette points, how do you call it? When it comes to giving koan, kanang, uh, the final output, I've been teaching CAD for more than 10 years now, pero more often than not, batik kihapon kayo ang koan, batik kihapon kayo ang output. And uh, last time when we had a talk sa among chapter sa UAP Cebu chapter with the uh, building official, mawasad ang ilang reklamo kanang ang ato ang quality of, of submissions when we apply for building permits are really poor. Okay, so I think it's high time bang ang technology already has uh, the capacity to give this in a very uh, I think most of your faculties here grew up na even when we started working as, as apprentices and architects, manual tanan amo ang drawing, and we can produce better drawings than you, unfortunately. I think for si Carmela, naman siguro og si Dayan mo wala na siguro kayo na bunog og manual, but I, I would say that the, the production that we do sa architectural offices that we worked on during that time when we did manual, actually better than some of the digitally produced na mga drawings karun, which is very sad, di ba? So, for digital na mga, mga drawings, we may have uh, more na, na mga, mga line weights. So, we're just adding two. So, we now have the, the heavy and the light. And we still have the, the pushe gapon or for the hatching. So the profile is fairly heavy for, for uh, drawing the container, the ground plane. And heavy na to is for the perimeter, the individual items, things that are being cut through. The medium is for the masses or openings in the walls. And light is for detail lights and pushe is for the hatching and the shading. This is an example of, of that. Okay. These are examples of those drawings and sketching that applies certain na. If you try to look at this sketch, this is not very, hindi naman ka makaingon nga, nindot kayo siya, di ba? But it's actually communicating an idea na, okay, muna na, dali sa sabtun. And that's what your drawing is supposed to be about. You're supposed to to, to give information. Like, muna na, yung header sa door or sa atong windows. So, kana, masabta niyo because it's stacked with information. Especially if you put in some point out. Okay? So, kana yung mga yung muna na ba? Okay? And when it comes also to uh, uh, digital uh, production, you would be able to see something like this. You have some, some uh, hidden lines there. So the information is already there. 
and these are are, are elements that's going to be constructed diba? and people are going to be reading this and trying are trying to understand this also so you want to put in as much information as you can when it comes to uh, your drawing these are very simple but they clearly uh, convey ideas or convey uh, instructions on how you're, you need to understand this or how you need to build it. Diba? If you're going to uh, use this as construction drawing. Same as detail. I think kani siguro ang pinaka, pinaka grabe na, na insult sa inyong mga submissions. Ang mga, mga, unsa na, mga details. And I don't understand why you can't do it beautifully like this when you're creating it in, in CAD. So by the way, when I, when, I, when I do CAD drawings, I no longer use the kind of mga color color bitaw. I do simple white no mga colors and ako na lang butangan ng line weights diretso. So that while I'm doing uh, my drawings directly, makita na nako ang mga line weights. I still use layers, but I don't use colors anymore. So that right away, I could see the, the, the line weights right away. Okay. And all the templates are available already online. So all the the, there are a lot of online na mga, mga libraries that you can use so that you don't have to model all of these elevations of, of, of uh, CR or sorry, your toilets or your lavatories and everything. Every, everything is available online. Already. Okay. And this also, lettering. Okay. This is a very important component in uh, your drawing also. Okay, how would we know a nice space din na wala yung label? Or nakalabel man ganit, pero di lipod na ito mabasa ang, ang nakasulat or ang lettering. Diba? It doesn't have to be beautifully uh, done. All it all it needs is legible siya. Okay, o bati din kagagi, ato bide ng ipamugos. Diba? But if you practice, uh, if you practice, you can always improve your, your penmanship. Diba? And this is the best way of doing it. We need to have guidelines. It needs to be legible. You need to understand the varying height and thickness of your lettering, and you need to be very careful where you place them. Okay, so if you're using tw uh, two millimeter na mga mga height na mga text, usually we do that for spaces. We do that for dimensions. Three mm usually for general distance. Five to seven mm are for drawing labels. Okay, for callouts we usually use two millimeters. If gamay na lang yun kaayo, we use 1.5 millimeter, but at the same time, you use a 0.09 or 0.1 na, na uh, tech pen. Or if you're doing it digitally, then you need to apply a certain thickness na po diretso sa inyuhang uh, text or sa inyuhang mga lines. Okay? And that's it. So, kaya na nako below 431. <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding the discussions from Architect Elizaga and Architect Cabasuarez this afternoon? Any question, David? Yeah. Huh? Nice. 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 Chat. Nice. chat box, no nice question. Ah, yeah. Uh, Sir Josh, Sir Clarify, AMBF actual must be greater than AMBF allowable. Yeah, the AMBF allowable will always prevail. Uh, I think you have this confused. Uh, AMBF actual is computed uh, by using your setbacks. Right? Okay. So there are times, Mango, that when you apply your setbacks, um, resulting na PF, um, resulting na footprint niya or the AMBF actual would be greater than AMBF allowable, which is used by multiplying your TLA by the PSO. That one will always prevail. Okay? But if you compute ang imuhang AMBF actual by using the setback and it's lower than the AMBF allowable, then okay, Rakay na. Yeah, you are within the, on, you're within the, the code. Okay, di man ka pwede mo violate sa setback na requirements. So you need to look at both. Natubag na nato ang babon. Bali, si AMBF na allowable really sets the limit. Okay? 
that's how far you can go. That's the ceiling. But then you need to compute also the actual because na may cert na naman po yung certain na uh, code which is the setbox that you need to uh, satisfy also. So that's why you need to compute for both. Or pang check and balance lang si allowable. Okay. Uh, I have a clarification with regards to the research. Uh, Sir Troy, do they need to present their computations for all the developmental controls of this uh, plate in the research? The research paper, no. Kay Koan. Don't. Delete na. But the submission nila sa ilang plates, I think we should yeah. include that. They should also show the computations. Yeah, uh, can, is... can they do the computations during the site analysis and programming? Uh, yes, uh, I am. Programming, they have to do it. Yes. So that will be one of their requirements when they present their uh, programming and site analysis, mm -hmm. the computations yes, for uh, the developmental controls. Yeah. Okay. So you heard it, guys. That will be part of your requirements for programming, which is due on February one. No, no programming the, the week after next. How oh, programming? Okay. Oh. February eight. 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 Okay. All right. So the deadlines for these submissions is definitely six thirty p.m. The end of your classes, ha? There will be no deadlines within overnight. Nga ka ng mga 12 na. All deadlines will be 6.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Okay? Okay. All right. So. Well, nag, well, nag, well nag lecture ko ba? Maka disturb ka yung itik. Unsa <laughs> maka distract ka unsa? Pag-distra kayo yung itik na thumbnail sa picture tapos nakisan na siyang bata. <laughs> Walang, pwede niyo mailisan kayo. Distracting ngayon naman sa itik. Mula ko, mula ko. Pero ipakar up, di ba, Joshua? Mula ko, gimak mo yun na takak ng lock. Alright, so uh, if there are no more questions with regards to the uh, to the plenary discussions this this afternoon, uh, would you like to meet your classes, respective instructors, after yes, this? Yes. Like yes. My, yes. Class, my class, no need. I already said, uh, no. Rabbi, okay. Kasana, have to meet. Oh, oh, also. I have yet to set up my Google Classroom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. See next week. Okay, okay, na, sir. Kaan po manta ron. Uh, yeah, Marquis, man good. Grabe, four kabuo. The first, first <laughs> week. Uh, first week and they're given the kaan plate already and they have a deadline next week. So, yeah. Alright. So, um, somebody is asking for a copy of the recording of this Zoom meeting. Wait. Do I have it? It's just Unsa ko siya pag recording ang recording ani asa ni mo send sa ako a Giselle bigay mo kubaga na mo Asa si Giselle ning out ra ba siya kay nag open sa chat sa ID nga Zoom I PM na siya siya ma'am uh, in regards to recording kit google meet to automatic man siya Lagi I think they, they, they'll have to upload it for good, ma'am. Upload pa siya kailangan. All right. Okay, sige. <coughs> okay, so any more questions, guys? Wala na? Mura ma yeah, please ask questions, guys. So, na, hilo, we're ma maklaro with everyone. Yeah. Almost ba? Overwhelming? How about your requirement? So, Overwhelmed na sila. Huh? Ako po the overwhelm ko. Ako sad. Hi.
na overwhelmed sa unsa man developmental controls Carl Wait just wa oh nag sa ko mag arkis mode pagay ko mag let's look ug team there is design for balik ka transition ng tarong Carl why we will want architect Carl Kabila di ay to the second year design uh, Kabat yes. namin ni Joshua, for everyone's information, we were at second year design a few years ago. Uh, 2014 <laughs> mo last, di ba, Carl? Oh, 2017. Mag, uh, si Joshua, early siya. 2017 ko, then 2018, I was promoted to design mm -hmm. fifth year. Ah. So, welcome back, sir, Carl. So, mukha lang ko, observe lang ko ninyo sa bagong kamalakan. <laughs> <laughs> so, bitaw, uh, guys, please ask questions. Okay, we are all here, and some of you might have the, uh, the same questions as the silent ones here. Ah, uh, ako somebody. My question ang dog. <laughs> Ay hello, ako ah. <laughs> Wait, magkwan sa ako kada. <laughs> Uh, uh, Karabio is saying uh, it saves right away to your files in the computer <coughs> takuan, katong recording. So if na 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 ko ay masave dire, I see uh, I'll send it to everyone. Where will I send this recording? Pwede na sa group chat na to, ma'am. And, and then, then kami na lai. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, sige, sige. Silbi uh Katong ko ano, mga files ito no, is share to sa respective na design ko ano, group, uh, Google Architect, uh, uh, Sir Troy already shared the PowerPoint for his uh, presentation for research. So, i-share na lang sa, sa, sa class na to. Sir I'll Joshua. Share also, I'll share also my PowerPoint after na to. Okay. Alright, so, thank you for your time, guys. And then, break out na lang for each classes. Um, I'll see my class at the Google meet. meet meet link. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sir Josh. Thank you, Sir. Thank Josh. you, everyone. Thank you, Dine, Sir Carl. Thank you, everyone. Sir Car uh, Carms, and thank you. Uh -oh.